Yeah. Okay, hi everybody, welcome to Art Night. Um, we are here for the opening of our March-April show, which is called Repurposed, which is also the title of our 2024 programming season. And this year we are highlighting women artists, women professionals, and women community members. Um, when we were thinking about this year in the theme of repurpose, we were thinking about women who use objects that may be used in another setting in a new way, or women who take a craft or a traditional um, art form like quilting and um, make it something new and exciting that you haven't seen before. Um, we also thought about purpose, repurposed as in like to, in reference to purpose. What is our purpose? How do people communicate that through their work? And when we were thinking about this show and women who use items that have been discarded and give them new life, um, I thought of seven that are connected to Kentucky in some way. Um, we have four here with us tonight, Carrie Leisure, Elaine Goodman, Laura Walker, and Penny Dobson. And we also have Deborah Major, Betsy Youngquist, and Diana Best represented in this show. And you can read more about them in the exhibition handout. Um, Carrie, Elaine, and Laura are gonna share a little bit about their work with us tonight. And Penny is here after the artist talk for any questions you might have. So who wants to get us started tonight? Elaine, do you wanna go first? I was born in 1940. People had just been through the Depression and into World War II. We were the fifth family that we knew of to live on the farm that my parents moved to when I was four. The outbuildings were full of all kinds of stuff because when people moved in with a horse and wagon, they didn't take everything and the outbuildings were filled with all this stuff. That's what we played with. It just born into it. My mother could make anything into what she needed some way, and that's how we were raised. Out of, all, out of five children in the family, four of them got this bug. <laughs> <laughs> our brother carved total poles. My sister was a uh, graphic artist, and my younger sister sculpts heads. So we were all right except for that other brother. <laughs> uh, I want to explain that I did the Folk Fest in Atlanta for 13 years, and a mother and daughter would come in the, uh, at 5 p.m. in August when it was 120 degrees in the parking lot. They would stand out there for an hour to get to come in and run to my booth. One year between them, they bought 16 pieces. It took my husband and me and them to get it all to the car. One year they came in with two huge shopping bags full of junk jewelry. The mother was a wholesale jewelry person. Somebody had sent her several hundred of these little things. They were supposed to be pins and they did not have pins on them. So they stayed in her place for a very long time. A couple of years ago, she called my husband and said, is Elaine still alive? <laughs> The next morning, they were on my porch. I don't know how she did it. I don't know how she did it. But I punched holes in them, and there's some on the post over in the other building, too. So it, it might not look like junk to people because they're so nice, but people have given me astonishing amounts of fantastic things. I, I go out on the studio porch in the morning. One morning was so full, I couldn't step out there. Sometimes I know who left it, sometimes I don't. Don't worry about me. <laughs> I, I consider myself retired, though I still do the attic gallery in Vicksburg. I've been there for 40 something years, and a few things over here, and visitors to my studio, which you're all welcome to do. Uh, it's still the greatest blessing of my life because there are no dull days, there's always something I want to do. And uh, it's just amazing the difference that it's made in my life in every respect, financially and otherwise. Uh, friends, made friends that I would never ever have had any chance to do and otherwise. And I will conduct as much as anybody ever could. I did 41 shows. I understood that the first three were up here on the street and the first one in the park that I did. That, that might not be correct, but that's what I was told. <laughs> I think. So I did it for 41 years and I still come and I still enjoy it, but I, 
I just can't do that anymore, but I appreciate everybody through the years involved with Kentucky and for the hundreds and hundreds of people that carried the things away mm -hmm. year after year after year. I appreciate you all so much. And uh, I think I've benefited from it as much as anybody ever will. You're going to be next. I am, but I'm not going to use the microphone. Okay. I'm very loud. <laughs> full-time working artist, I would have laughed in your face. Um, at 40, I was an antique stealer and I started playing with the broken bits and bobs and just, you know, making like silly bracelets and that kind of thing. Um, but what eventually happened was my English major, which, you know, everyone tells you don't get an English degree, the English major in my brain took over and when I picked up the objects, I didn't just see the thing, I saw the meaning of the object and then in its relationship to other objects and what they could do together. So, you know, people will tell you an object tells a story. So my shoe has a story to tell, like of the places it's been or what have you. But in my mind, the story of the shoe doesn't happen until I've paired it with something else, like, I don't know, a bunch of wheels and now you've walked a mile in my shoes or um, some doll faces, now it's stepped all over their face. You know, like, so taking the objects and relating them together, that's where the story begins, not just the, the item itself existing, if that makes any sense. So it's like a novel or a poem, you're kind of weaving them together and ultimately telling like, the tale. So when you come into my booth at Kentet, I display them on the books because they each have a title to go with them. and. I'm so thankful I did it for the show because I think the jewelry might have disappeared. But you can read the story and kind of the um, thought process behind each piece here. Um, at shows, it's just the title and me yapping at you. Um, <laughs> but I hope, like, I try to bring like a wide variety. I hope you guys enjoy looking at them. I am Laura Walker and I am interested in painting emotions. That's the only reason I make art and it's the reason I collect art, the art that I have. I love watching people on social media, hearing their story, understanding what goes into their pieces, and that's the art that I want in my home. So I have this body of work, which is whimsical and fun, and then I have another body of work, which I'm putting in the galleries, my watercolors, which are more serious, and people ask how you can do, how can the same artist be these two people? It's like, well, we all have different sides to us. But I also love working with the found objects, and like you were talking about, it feels like love when people give me bags of junk. You know? <laughs> I know they love me, so I guess we're all open to questions. Yeah. Any questions? Okay, great. Well, I think our I artists think will be here a little while questions. longer if you think of anything. Well, let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> For each of you, what is the weirdest thing someone has ever given you? Given you? Oh. Yeah, like to, to put in your work. Okay. Um, the weirdest thing that anyone's given you to put into your work? That's a good question. I don't get a lot of things given to me, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I was right, given a hand me. dryer once, I mean, because I have one already. <laughs> and so they're like, oh, I have one. And I was just going to let you have it. I mean, I pulled a toaster out of the garbage can. My husband dared to try to throw it away. <laughs> I to disassemble it. I saw a dead bird outside, and I was really tempted to pick it up. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I didn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but my bones, you know? Yeah. I, I can't think of anything for myself, but my mother would take things to work that she had made, and uh, Somebody asked her one day, did we throw away the toilet tissue after we used it because we <laughs> had <laughs> everything? She went down in the pasture and got a dried cow chip and put a flower arrangement on it and took it to work. <laughs> That's creative. No limits. No limits. <laughs> but sometimes people will give me something to think, what can I ever do with it? And it turns out to be exactly the right thing for something 
eventually. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I don't think there's anything that's really, I mean, no, nothing, nothing to me is too weird, but I have, okay, things people have said to me, which are awesome, um, do you see a therapist? <laughs> and then a lady who, she bought a, a purse, one of the necklaces with a coin purse, like you got, she came back the next year, and um, she told me that she keeps her kids dry to belly buttons in it. <laughs> yeah, no, like I have four. No, I don't want to know. The umbilicus? I don't know. She was wearing her. Of course, that's a great idea. No, it was not you. Me to go make jewelry with my kids, all the bills. <laughs> 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 yeah. I don't feel yeah. bad about keeping my kids' feet. Now. So, I would guess, okay, I'm gonna say dried umbilical cords would be the weirdest thing I've ever seen in jewelry. What is it? Dried up umbilical cords. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that yeah. is, that yeah. is, yeah. That's, yeah. that's reaching there. Mm -hmm. But I don't use those. <laughs> I'm like, no, I was like, welcome how, to my how therapy. Long, how long were you with you doing this? It's like, I don't need it. It's yeah. all natural. Yeah, <laughs> true that. Any other questions? Okay. I, wait, oh, I, I don't really have a question, but I'm going to tell on Penny. <laughs> I happen to know that uh, she has a wonderful husband who will drive around town right before the garbage pickup <laughs> and look for vintage pieces. Oh. Is that right? <laughs> That's amazing. Apparently, yeah. no yeah. comment. <laughs> <laughs> no shame in the dumpster, guys. She's not going to say anything. I want to give it away. Oh, I'm sorry. She was talking to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for being with us and I hope you guys all enjoy the show. Um, we do have a little I Spy that will take you across both galleries and you can turn it back in for a chance to win tickets to this year's Kentucky Festival. So. Oh, nice.